Hello, I am Mukesh Bansal. Welcome to Sparks. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the topic of starting up. In every exponential impact journey, you need to start at some point. Often, starting up is the hardest part. I have started many things in the last 25 years. Most of them didn't go according to plans. I have not been able to finish many of those projects. Some I did or was able to take to some logical conclusion. I have seen a lot of people around me who want to start things. Some people are never able to take their first step. I see some people who start but start to stumble the moment they start and at some point they start to give up. Some people are able to stay on the journey for long enough and they keep learning, keep iterating because they have prepared themselves well for the startup journey. So today I want to discuss, you know, why starting up is so difficult. Uh, why do a lot of us have dreams, aspirations? We think we can do something a lot better than what exists out there. But yet, we keep holding ourselves back. There are a lot of reasons for why starting up is difficult. And there are a lot of things you can do proactively to prepare for your starting up journey. One of the biggest things about starting up is developing a deeper understanding of who you are. Now, this whole idea of knowing yourself is very ancient. Buddha is supposed to have said the hardest thing a human being can do is get to know himself or herself. But it's easier said than done. Sometimes it may take lifetime to really figure out who you are but some elements of starting to know yourself is very important because that's going to heavily inform what you are going to start up how you are going to start up what you are going to over index on so how do you develop an understanding of knowing yourself it requires some element of introspection there are many different ways to introspect people who have let's say evening journaling practice that's a great method of introspecting because when you write down something about your day, what went well, what didn't go well, what you like about yourself, what you don't like about yourself, some kind of weekly reflection practice, some kind of meditation practice. Uh, if you work with a coach or a therapist, that conversation or even a conversation with people who are really close to you, talking about your vulnerabilities. Uh, every time you get into trouble, thinking about what got you in that trouble in the first place and so on. With that, you can start to develop a picture of yourself over a period of time. I think one very important thing to know, what your true strengths are, what are things either you're naturally good at or things you like to getting better at, uh, something which really gets you going. You know, being aware of that is going to heavily inform what you like to do. Understanding whether you like to be in structured environment, you know, do you feel much better about your day when someone clearly lays it out for you what is expected you from the day or are you someone who craves a lot of freedom that uh, I just want this space around me I'm going to figure it out as I go along these are natural personality traits or tendencies that uh, one should be aware of how do you deal with the situation when things are not going ac according to the plan uh, does that unnerve you or you like that sense of adventure are you someone who likes to interact with people most of the time? Is your method of problem solving is talking to people, walking up to whiteboard, listing down various options and having a brainstorm? Or are you somebody who likes to work on a problem in isolation? You like to go away in a corner and work on the problem by yourself. For example, I prefer the latter. If I have a difficult problem to solve, I would rather find one, two, three hours just go somewhere, not interact with anyone and think about it deeply, write down my thoughts. That's my way of problem solving. Definitely not the only way or the best way, but that's my way. I'm aware of that. Knowing yourself is also understanding what your true beliefs and value system are. We have different beliefs. You know, belief can be about the world. There are people have religious, spiritual beliefs. Uh, what you believe about economy? You know, are you, what do you believe about other people? Do you think other people are inherently good? or bad? Are you someone who find it very easy to trust people? Or you take your time in trusting people? All these are absolutely fine. You know, we have different varieties of human nature. The thing is, the more and more you know yourself, you'll be able to make choices which are aligned with what you truly like. Because 
if you end up starting up in a field which does not align with who you really are, you are going to struggle. You will not enjoy the journey. You will have a lot of self-doubts from early on and that's not a good way to start up. Thinking very deeply about what really matters to you. You know, in my career over a period of time, I realized what really mattered to me is creating something. It does not matter whether what I create is small or huge. Just the act of creating. You know, that's what attracted me towards startups. That's why I ended up working for four different startups before I started Mintra. Not only did I work for four different startups, I also, along the way, tried to start three different things, all three of which failed. I clearly wasn't prepared. I did not know what I know now. I could have prepared a lot better. But uh, what that told me is I was very comfortable in that unstructured environment. I was very comfortable starting from a blank sheet of paper. I remember this quote, someone said that a uh, blank sheet of paper is God's way of telling you why creation is so damn hard. You know, that's how I feel like a starting up journey. When you start, there is absolutely nothing. You truly start with blank slate of paper. And when you're st staring at that figurative blank sheet of paper, it is very unnerving. You don't know what to do. What is the first step you should take? In that context, also understanding what your fears are. Because starting up journey is going to bring you face to face with all of your worst fears. If you have confidence issues, self-doubt issues, if you feel you don't have what it takes, these are not facts. These are just your own fears. And being aware of those fears, building a method to deal with those fears is going to be very important because without that, when you start, you will start to face all your fears and you may just end up validating your fears because the situation is going to be so unfamiliar, so different and so, so full of ups and downs that your fears may start to get really magnified. But if you're aware of your fears, you can deal with it. You know, you can acknowledge these are the natural fears you have and you don't need to give in to your fears. You can do something about that. You will need a lot of inspiration when you start. So any activities, you know, whether spending time in nature or hanging out with your friends or reading a nice book or listening to good music, um, what kind of things you like, uh, where do you think a lot about consumer products? You know, every time you find a beautifully designed product, does that inspire you? Uh, do you like people, do you get inspired by people who communicate really well, people who are inspiring speakers? Just being aware of that will again inform you the kind of choices you make in starting up and also kind of role you will play in your initial starting up journey. You also need to think very deeply about why do you want to start up? I have generally find, found that starting up does not mean that you quit your job and start something from scratch. You can also start a lot of things at your current place of work. There's so many opportunities to take initiatives. I, In the companies I work for, I find it so often that uh, there's so many problems inside the organization which are waiting to be solved. No one is putting up their hand. No one is trying to build something new or solve a problem that everyone is aware of. That's one way to start up. You can start something as a hobby. You may, let's say you say that I'm going to learn how to run a marathon and in next two years, I'm going to finish a marathon in four hours, which is very challenging, but quite doable if you plan for it. So that's one way to start. You can volunteer your time for a cause that you really care about. I live in Bangalore, you know, we see so many issues with traffic um, in Bangalore, you know, maybe you want to do something about that, you know. I have earlier talked about an example of this person who wanted to do something about the hygiene of lakes in Bangalore and has managed to create a huge impact in just last four or five years. So starting up can be in many different ways. Uh, maybe you want to write a book so you can start up on that, you know, without having to quit your job. You just need to create sufficient time so you can start writing those 500 words a day. Many different ways to start. Not everyone needs to start a company. Or even if you want to start a company, you can wait for your time. You know, all of us are going to have a career spanning 40, 50, maybe even 60 years given all the work that's happening in the longevity space. There's so many entrepreneurs who start in their 40s, 50s, 
we all know the story of Falguni Nair who started Nike. She started the company in her 50s and uh, Nike has been poster child of Indian e-commerce space, had a phenomenal IPO. If she can start a company in her 50s, anyone can. You need to put yourself in the best possible position. So it, just because startups are cool, exciting does not mean that you need to quit your job. Today, in fact, the probably the best thing you may do is to set a very strong foundation. So whenever you feel the urge, whenever you feel ready to start, you will know exactly what you are getting into. You will be getting into this with a lot of confidence. If we pay attention to what happens on our everyday life, we may find a lot of interesting problems to work on. My friend Mukri started Zop now when he realized that everybody has to spend so much time standing in a queue for just buying grocery. Everybody knows exactly what you need week after week and why do you need to wait in the line to buy the same Atta Dal Chawal every week. So he created Zop now and he has done phenomenally well since starting the company. There is a serial entrepreneur in Israel, Yuri Levine. He has a phenomenal book, Fall in Love with the Problem, Not the Solution. This is the mindset he takes to every startup he has created. He was the original pioneer behind the map app called Waze. So he was very frustrated that when he is to go from one place to another, he does not know which is a better route to take, whether it will take longer at a route A or route B uh, because the real-time traffic uh, data was not available. So he created this uh, uh, app Waze. Similarly, another problem he encountered was the fact that when people travel to Europe, uh, most of the purchases you can get VAT refund, but for that you need to keep the receipts with you, you need to go to the right counter at the airport, submit all the receipts to claim your refund. Now it's uh, it may be just fifty or hundred dollars per person, but across all the travelers, it adds up to billions of dollars of unclaimed refund. So he built a solution for that. Or oh, what are the problems you are worried about? You know, can you take some time and pay attention to what frustrates you the most? What are things you wish that uh, were better? You know, do you want to take better notes? Do you want your calendar and uh, to do list? to work a lot better. You want your word processor to behave in a different manner. You want to automatically block ads in the content you consume. I don't know. You know. Just pay attention to what frustrates you. Uh, anyone who start up has a vision for future. People believe that world can be somewhat better place. Going back to my journey at Cult, we really believed that we can create a fitness center which is more fun and easy. Is unlike any other fitness center that people are used to where you have all these machines. It's very difficult to walk into those fitness centers, this long learning curve and so on. We felt we can really change the game and make it very convenient, easy and accessible. So the problems we face are problems, yes, but there are also opportunities to think about what can you create. Almost no ideas emerge in isolation. Ideas emerge from everyday experience. So pay a lot more attention to that. Everything that might be frustrating you today might be a, a seed for a game-changing product or a company or an initiative that you can potentially start. There are a lot of myths about starting up. One of them is you have to come from privileged background. Privileged background in Indian context may mean that you need to have IIT or IM degree or you need to have come from a rich family so that your startup capital is available. But if you look at all the entrepreneurs closely, you find plenty of exceptions. Uh, Kunal Shah, who built Free Charge and later on Cred, or Ritesh Agrawal, who built uh, Oyo Rooms, they are not from IIT IMs, but they ended up creating these game-changing companies which are highly celebrated. You know, they move the needle significantly, it's about, you know, starting up. They had the courage of conviction. They started. Ritesh, in fact, dropped out of college to start OYO Rooms. And what he has done in the last 10 years is just absolutely incredible. There's a myth that you need to have original ideas. That's far from true. If you look at a lot of amazing companies we have seen emerge out of India, they were first in India, yes, but they were not first in the world. You know, before the advent of Flipkart or Mintra, there were a lot of e-commerce apps around the world, some of them very large. Amazon was highly celebrated. 
In fact, Sachin and Bini used to work at Amazon before they uh, stepped out and started Flipkart in India. Similarly, before Ola started in India, we had um, Uber taking off in a big way in US. So we had that role model available. In Mintra's journey, we looked at a lot of global fashion retailers very closely. Zalando in Europe, Zappos in US, Netshoes in Brazil and so on. Food delivery has taken off in a big way. But before Swiggy t- took off in India, there was Mithuan in China. So the point is the ideas don't need to be original. As long as you either apply an existing idea to a new geography or you modify the idea in a different manner. And their myth is that you need to have venture capital. Now, if you want to scale something very rapidly, then it's perhaps true. But we have plenty of examples of people who have created outstanding companies without using any venture capital. Two of the most admired companies in India uh, that I personally like are Zoho, which is over $10 billion in valuation. Sridhar Vembu, I hope one day he is willing to come on this podcast, has never raised any venture capital. Similarly, Zeroda, which is the foremost online brokerage company. Again, Nitin and Nikhil Kamath, they have never reached venture capital. They still own 100% of the company. It might have taken them longer to build the company, but they are fully in control of their destiny. So if people can build world-class companies like Zoho or Zeroda without raising any venture capital, I'm sure many of us can do as well. Sometimes people talk about a starting up means you have to completely give a work-life balance. Uh, I don't think that's true at all. In fact, I think that's counterintuitive. Uh, If you don't have good work-life balance, if you're not well-rested, if you're not healthy, if you don't have good relationships, I don't think you'll be able to bring your best to work every day. So I know plenty of entrepreneurs who take all aspects of their life very seriously In fact, what's great about entrepreneurship is you learn all these tools about time management, about prioritization, about really knowing who you are, what matters to you, about ruthlessly eliminating what does not matter to you. And you are able to apply that to all walks of your life, including personal life. I personally never really work more than 50 or 60 hours a week. I don't believe in this whole idea of, you know, to be an entrepreneur, you have to work 80, 90 hours a week. Sure, you can do that, but you're going to burn out in six months or one year. And that's not the way to build a great company. So I do not think to starting up, you need to heavily compromise your work-life balance. You can find right balance. High quality of six, eight, 10 hours of work can add up over a long period of time. A lot of myth about the age. People believe that you need to be in your early 20s to be able to start a company. In fact, there are so many examples of people who build world-class companies in their 30s and 40s. Uh, There are numerous studies which show that median age of a Silicon Valley founder is in their mid-40s. That's a great age to start because by that time, you have uh, enough experience. You know what works, what doesn't work. You are a lot more self-aware. You have some kind of financial stability. You have a lot of fallback options in case things don't work out. So, you know, there may be all these myths about starting up, but I don't think all of them are categorically true. I think more than myths, what matters is what do you believe in? What really inspires you? What motivates you? What is the vision for yourself you have in the long term? And anything you're going to start up has to align really well with that. This is where some awareness and articulation of your purpose come in. There are many different ways to articulate the purpose and it's a journey. I don't think anyone can have crystal clear purpose very early in life. But you can keep moving towards that. The journey of introspection, journey of getting to know yourself, journey of knowing what you really like, uh, what gets you all charged up is going to inform you in coming up with some kind of purpose. Peter Diamandis uses this phrase, Massively transformative purpose, MTP. Some people call it big, hairy, audacious goal, bhag. Whatever articulation you like, being able to come in touch with that massively transformative purpose can help guide your journey. How do you come up with that purpose? I think the you know, a lot of you, I'm sure, would have seen the book Ikigai, which has become very popular in last 
uh, 10 years or so. It's based on an old Japanese concept of how do you find what truly matters to you. So Ikigai is a intersection of what you love, things you enjoy doing. So for example, I really enjoy building things. It gives me a lot of joy. It does not matter what is the outcome I'm able to get out of that. Uh, then what the world needs. If you are able to work on something you love doing and what the world needs, that can create a sense of impact in your work. Then you think about, can you get paid for that? And last thing, are you really good at or are you willing to become really good at? And if you can find something which is the intersection of these four things, what you love, what the world needs, what you can get paid for and what you're truly good at, that's your ikigai or reason for being. That's where you can find your full flourishing. You can find something which has immense fulfillment in the act of doing the thing. And it's also probably going to end up useful for the world, make the world a better place in the process. And those are places where you can, you are better off starting up. There are few foundational things that you can do to prepare yourself for your startup journey. One of the things that's super helpful is deeply immersing yourself in the domain. In my case, I moved to Silicon Valley in 1999 and from 99 till 2007, I worked for four different startups. So for me, that was me immersing myself in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Over those eight years, I got to see multiple startup journeys. I got to see a lot of things up close. What works, what doesn't work, what is founder dynamics, how do people interact with venture capitals, what do VCs see in the startup, what does product market fit mean, how do you create, crack the growth engine and so on. So any area you like, if you can figure out a way to immerse yourself in that domain for an extended period of time. In ancient time, there was this concept of apprenticeship, which was how people will learn any vocational training. Uh, if, you want to do, if you wanted to be a painter, you will do an apprenticeship with a master painter. That's what Leonardo Vinci did. In fact, the idea of apprenticeship was that you will commit yourself for seven years Usually in your late teen years, when you are about 15, 16, you will work with a master for those seven years. You will do all kind of work assigned to you. It may be very menial work. If you read Leonardo Vinci's biography, you realize in the early years, he would do everything from sweeping the floor, from mixing paints, cleaning brushes of other painters. And after a few years of apprenticeship, he was given the task of painting minor figures. So the master of the workshop will be working on a painting and then some small filler details needed to be done which will be given to the new apprenticeship uh, new apprentices like Leonardo Vinci and he will that's where you start Benjamin Franklin who has done outstanding things in life he writes you know his, in his early life he was an apprentice to his brother in his printing shop that's where he learned everything now about printing business but he also developed the love of books he got access to a lot of books he was able to write he used to contribute a lot of articles as a ghost writer and thus his lifelong love affair with books and writing started so what can you do to immerse yourself in a particular domain uh, if you think you like um, you know take any examples you know if you are interested in ai you know can you find yourself a job working for a company which is doing serious work in ai if you like e-commerce, can you work for an e-commerce company like Mintra Flipkart in India? If you like manufacturing, you know, if you are excited about everything that's happening in uh, robotics, can you figure out a way to work in a robotics company? It's very difficult to connect the dots from outside. When you give yourself time to immerse in a domain, you start to see subtle patterns. You start to see what works in that domain. You start to learn the rules of that domain. And with that, you are able to get a better picture of what the gaps are, what the opportunities are, what your unique strengths are in the context of that domain. Ryan Holiday, who has written a number of amazing books about stoic philosophy, he did the same thing by working for 
Robert Greene. Now, Robert Greene himself is very accomplished author. He has a deeply insightful books about human nature, human condition, what drives us. By working as his apprentice, Ryan Holiday realized that he can learn the craft of writing deeply insightful books. So he did that, did that work for a long period of time. He really didn't care how much he was getting paid. When you are working as an apprentice, what really matters is the amount of learning that you are having. You know, you have to prioritize learning way above any kind of monetary income you might be getting because that learning is going to build the foundation for what you are going to do later is going to be immensely valuable. If you get an opportunity to work with uh, someone you think highly accomplished in the area you are interested in, just being able to work with that person up close being able to watch that person you know, on a daily basis, contribute to his or her work, is going to polish your skills very quickly, is going to accelerate your learning in a dramatic manner. Jeff Bezos had this very interesting way of letting people apprentice with him. What he will do is identify a young, ambitious, dynamic individual in the organization and appoint them as his shadow. Yes, that's what the role was called, shadow. And as the name implies, what the shadow was supposed to do is shadow Bezos, you know, throughout the day. Uh, the person will get to attend every single meeting, be in the room for all discussions, and the person who is appointed a shadow will observe everything, take notes, give input to Bezos, synthesize all the day's work, and just reflect upon the whole day over a period of time to see whether Bezos is being effective, what can he do differently, and you can imagine the kind of exposure this role gives to watch one of the greatest business person of all time up close. Most people who have worked as Bezos apprentice in the shadow role have gone on to do great things within Amazon or outside. Amit Agarwal, who started Amazon in India and was the Amazon head in India for the longest period of time, worked as shadow for Bezos in early 2000s. That's just one example that many people have been able to play this role. If you can think about how can you have similar exposure, somebody in your industry that you admire, someone who you look up to, can you ask for a role which allows you to be with that person day in, day out, observe everything that the person deals with and kind of create this apprenticeship model for yourself. I love this book Mastery by Robert Greene where he talks about one of the critical phase of acquiring mastery is to work as an apprentice. He defines three different phases of apprentice. First one is deep observation. In other words, it means, you know, doing a deep observation phase, just watch everything. You don't need to have an opinion. You don't need to problem solve. You don't need to give inputs. Just observe a master in action and see what kind of patterns you are able to see. Second phase of apprenticeship is skills acquisition. That's when you start practicing. When you are given some work, you try to do this at the best of your abilities. Try to see, can you come up with something which is at the same level or even better than the person you are working with. Third phase of apprenticeship is experimentation. Can you start making changes? Can you go beyond what was asked of you to do? Can you start to take initiative? Can you change the rules of the game? And so on. By creating this apprenticeship in your life, what you are doing is you are learning about a subject or a domain in a very deep manner. And this learning will come in super handy when you start on your own. Along with immersing yourself deeply in a domain, it's also useful to just wander around. What I mean by wandering around is giving yourself exposure to many different topics, a lot of topics which may not be related. You may connect the dots in many unexpected ways much later in life. We all know story of Steve Jobs, how he was able to connect dots looking back when he was building Macintosh. It so happened that very early in his college career, he was taking all these elective classes. One of them was about calligraphy. Now, in 70s, how will you ever study calligraphy? What can you ever do with that? Well, it turned out when he was designing visual interface for Macintosh, his knowledge of calligraphy came in super handy in designing absolutely beautiful fonts for Macintosh. And we all know that Apple stands for highly aesthetic design. Somewhere taking that calligraphy 
class affected steve jobs thinking about beauty and aesthetics and he was able to bring that into macintosh similarly at some point he was visiting xerox park palo alto research center which was the hub of cutting edge innovation in electronics in 70s lot of formative ideas of uh, initial apple computers came from what steve jobs saw at xerox park and so on in my own journey i think our uh, in mintra's case the pivot from personalization to fashion came because i was visiting all these different malls in 2010 i would go around and visit different malls in pune hyderabad calcutta etc and uh, somewhere it occurred to me that uh, pretty much everything what people retail in malls are just apparel footwear and accessories if you visualize a mall you will see that almost entire floor comprised of brands which are selling fashion stuff and i started thinking you know why can't we sell all this stuff online so people can access these products from the convenience of their own home i have no doubt that my journey of cure fit and cult started because i've been personally experimenting with fitness for prior 15 years i had no desire to start a fitness company or a health company but because i enjoyed learning about health and fitness eventually at some point dot connected and i was able to start a company in that space so taking your hobby seriously whatever interests you you know if you are a book lover try to attend book festivals in india we have jaipur lit fest which is outstanding festival you feel so inspired and energized by all the authors you see there if you are a art lover visit different art museums when well, last time you took some time off over your weekend and went to art museum just go wander around see things if you are nature lover make sure you know you take time off periodically and go spend time in nature who knows what observation you will make and how will you later connect dots uh, i know the founder of india hikes who was personally very keen of going on these hikes india has all these amazing mountains way up north but most of those hiking trails are not known it's not organized is very difficult for people to figure out what is a nice trek you can plan for so the india hikes founder he liked doing it for himself at some point he realized that maybe a lot of other people will also like that and he ended up creating a beautiful business from that uh, personal passion of his which is around hiking so the combination of deep domain immersion creating some kind of apprentice model for yourself and creating the serendipity in your life by wandering around by exposing yourself for a lot of different things can prepare yourself can help build depth as well as variety of ideas that you can connect in unique ways to eventually start something unique and original to kick start your startup journey part of immersing yourself in domain and wandering around is some kind of commitment to learning you know it's very interesting that most of us dedicate first you know 20 25 years of life uh learning in a very systematic manner you know we have to go through k through 12 education we have to go through college some people will opt to go for masters and that's where the most important thing in our life is learning because that's what we do full time you know being a student is a full time job every day you show up you go through lectures you read books you do assignments and we do all of that at some point we start working and career takes off and we focus on what we need to deliver at work what we need to do to get promotion so on but a lot of people stop learning they stop investing time in learning but that is quite catastrophic you know we live in a world which is moving very fast everything we use today didn't exist 10 or 15 or 20 years ago uh the tools you need to do the tools you need to use to be able to do your job well didn't exist few years ago so unless you are investing time in learning you are not going to be able to keep up with the demands of job keep up with the changing landscape in the world keep up with the new kind of opportunities that keep emerging i feel it's absolutely paramount for all of us to invest certain amount of time in continuous learning you pick a number you know if you ask me i will say 20% of your time needs to go into learning so which means if you work 5 days a week you need to invest one day a week in learning there's so many different ways you can learn um you can learn by reading a lot of books you know these days 
so many interesting books are available on all kind of topics one of my favorite learning method is uh if i pick a topic uh, for example you know in preparation for this podcast i really want to learn about uh, art of storytelling and art of public speaking so what i'll do is and i have done is pick up 10 books on this topic go through all those books when you go through 10 books on a topic what happens is you start to see the pattern you see what is a mainstream thinking in that field what is a fringe thinking what are some of the leading thinkers on the field are thinking about is there any research which is which everyone is quoting in my you know journey of health in the process of building cure fit uh, in the process of writing my second book hacking health i probably gone through over 100 books about various aspects of health so books is one method these days outstanding courses are available online everything from coursera to udemy to uh, various international degrees available on platforms like such as eruditus or upgrade you can use those courses you can hire a coach you know there are variety of coaches available everybody from a life coach to a public speaking coach to a fitness coach to learning specific skills uh all these coaches are available you can join a class offline or you can find a coach online it's not that expensive very tiny portion of your income will be going into that but the investment will pay for itself many many times over you can also do a degree part time you know now we have all these platforms available where with just a little investment on a daily basis or a weekly basis you can acquire additional degrees you choose your method of learning but um, if you want to truly prepare to start up something unique you need to invest in your learning you cannot become great at starting up by just staying idle or keep doing same thing again and again uh recognizing that proactive investment in learning is very important creating your own method of learning which works for who you are how you think uh which kind of learning method you find most effective is something only you can decide but prioritizing that is i think super important you know anyone who i know who is a great entrepreneur keeps learning they spend disproportionate amount of time whenever they encounter something new they think about how can i learn the most about this you know whether it's about um how do we learn about building a brand how do we learn about building a product how do you learn about becoming a leader how do i learn about doing strategy well you know all these are specific skills specific ways of thinking with the uh, proactive investment you can get lot better in all these things if you want to start something in life you will have to con- cultivate what i call founders mindset or founder personality people who start something are a little bit different then everybody not that different but little bit different there are subtle differences which are very important and looking for those traits in your personality or proactively cultivating that is very important because otherwise the journey of starting up can feel highly unfamiliar uncomfortable and unnerving first and foremost you know most people who start something they deeply believe in something the belief is absolutely unflinching uh you know i have some beliefs you know around starting up you know one of them i really believe that uh, entrepreneurs move the world forward they move the world forward by taking a risk by building something that doesn't exist they take disproportionate risk and sometime they have to deal with lot of failures but um, i do believe entrepreneurs are very important in the world that's my belief uh i believe health is very important for people hence you know what i am doing with my uh current organization curefit what i'm also trying to do with this podcast where we'll keep talking about a lot of health topic i just feel that no one can create a huge impa- huge impact without investing in your own health to be a founder you have to deeply believe in something your opinions can't just be a function of whatever happens to be in vogue what everybody else is talking about what your friends are talking about or what happens to be cool at the moment that's not a founder mindset like deeply believing in something where you have a reason to believe something you don't get deterred with uh, small objections or naysayers you have to be willing to disagree with people around you this is very hard you know in the education system we grew up in we are always looking for approvals 
we want approval from our parents approval from teachers approval from people around us the moment you start to act differently someone will point it out to you that you are not fitting in you start to look like that black sheep but uh, founders are very comfortable to disagree with people around you let's say you want to leave office at 5 pm every day and the culture in office everybody leaves at 8 pm now to be able to do that requires you to be bold people around you may not agree they may think that you are not taking your work seriously while you may go home and think deeply about a problem you know you may end up working for next 5 hours uninterrupted but that's your belief and you are willing to back your belief with an action and you are comfortably willing to disagree with other people jeff bezos famously called that if you want to do outstanding things in life you need to have the willingness to be misunderstood for a long period of time uh, an example comes to mind is when uh, bhavish uh, was starting ola i think his father told him something you know equivalent of saying you know why did you have to computer science if you are going to do a uh, taxi operator business you know that's how ola looks like in the beginning but that willingness to be vi- that willingness to be misunderstood do your own thing and not really caring what other people think is very important to nurture founders mindset founders are also very transparent you don't need to play to the galleries you should be able to speak your mind freely say things as they are if uh, you don't like something at work you should be able to talk about it doesn't matter whether you are talking to your manager your manager's manager or the ceo of the company your belief are your belief and you should be able to talk about them you are not trying to come up with the right thing to say which is going to be the accepted thing in the room otherwise you just become part of the same echo chambers founders have the able to see things from unique angles uh they see things that other people are not seeing they don't optimize for approval from other people being in tune with what you stand for being able to speak in your own voice is super important so you can watch out for these traits you can practice becoming a founder without having starting up anything by practicing these skills you know we have an opportunity to practice these things pretty much on everyday basis and uh, you can try to be more mindful about this and see you know how can you develop this comfort of just being who you are and only optimizing for that being authentic being original being who you are and not really caring for what other people think having this founders mindset will serve you really well when you eventually start something because all of these mindsets will get thoroughly tested in your startup journey okay so so far we've been talking about what it takes to prepare for a startup journey but what does startup mean what kind of things you can start up in i don't think you know by startup we should only think about starting a company there are so many ways to start up let me share one example last year i started this course we call it eld entrepreneurship leadership design the course is designed for people who want to be entrepreneurs you can be entrepreneurs by starting your own company or you can be an entrepreneur inside your organization now this was just an idea in my head about 3 years ago i talked about this idea with some people i got encouraging response that this might be helpful but uh, how do you start a course i have no idea you know and then i was just procrastinating on it not taking any action uh, after not doing anything about this at some point i just decided to commit so first step i did was i talked to a couple of people around me asked for their help and uh, requested can they help put together a cohort of 30 people so we started reaching out to people uh shared the pitch saying we are thinking of starting a course do you uh, will this be of help to you and are you willing to commit for 16 weeks to participate in this course and you know we found that most people were willing to give it a shot we got initial commitment for 30 people and then i had 4 weeks to put the content together and 4 weeks was too little to put the content together for 
entire 15 weeks. But what I did was I sat down and uh, with the help of my team, put the content together for first two or three episodes. And then we started. And the idea of public commitment is, you know, once you have the cohort, once you have these 30 people, you're done first lecture and second lecture, you have no choice. And then we basically put the content together just in time before each week. But end of 15 weeks, you know, we have done all 15 courses. We got really decent feedback and we had the content material for all 15 lectures ready. And that's, you know, the creation of a new initiative, a new product called ELD. So in my book, that's an example of starting up. You can think of some such examples of, you know, what can you start today? I really would like each of the episodes that we discuss in this podcast series to trigger something new in your life. You can start up a health goal where you are going to create a system for yourself and pursue the health goal. You can uh, start up a new initiative in your organization. Uh, just think of anything which is not good. You know, a lot of people lament about the fact that how inefficient meetings are in all office. Can you start an initiative to fix that? You know, perhaps you want to create a process where every meeting starts with a clear agenda, clear outcome. And at the end of the meeting, you have a ritual of uh, reviewing whether their objective was met or not met and sharing the action item summary from the meeting with everyone who are participating. Or you want to, you may want to create a new knowledge management system for your company. It almost doesn't matter. I think we have so many opportunities to start up in our personal life, in our professional life. And the beauty of starting with these things is that the journey and the principles are almost same. You can use those as a vehicle for practicing your founder's mindset, your preparation for starting up, your ability to do something unconventional. You know, I live in a large apartment society. You know, there are so many communal activities that happen in the large apartment society. Maybe you can start an initiative around that. Exercise your imagination. Think about, you know, what is something you can start now and in three or six months down the line, see it come to fruition or even if it doesn't come to fruition, it's absolutely fine to fail because whenever you try to start anything new, it is not going to go out of the plan. You will have setbacks. You will have failures and um, failures are in fact, in many ways, great outcome. You know, a lot of people talk about failure being the greatest teacher. I cannot agree with this statement more. You know, every time I've encountered failure of any kind, it has triggered very deep reflection. Uh, I introspect. I think about what I can learn from failure. I have seen time and again the companies which go through deep failure modes, they completely reinvent themselves and become a lot better in the process. If you look at any successful entrepreneur, you will see the journey of series of failures and every failure would transform the person significantly. So when you start up, you take a small initiative. If it fails, you almost need to say, you know, hello failure. You know, you look failure in the face, try to process that uh, what went wrong, what are learnings which are embedded in that, you know, by making yourself uncomfortable, by stepping out of your comfort zone, by trying to start something new, you have created this opportunity for yourself where there is a chance of failure. And once you encounter the failure, there are probably very deep learnings that can stay with you for a long period of time. So you can practice this with uh, small startup steps uh, in any walk of your life and then let this be preparation ground for your eventual startup journey in the long run. So what kind of things you can start? I think is only limited by your imagination. You can write a book. That could be a side project. You can start building a new product. Uh, it could be a technology product in consumer space or enterprise space. It could be an actual physical product if you like to work with your hands. You can start a new organization, um, a classical startup, you know, where you have a clear problem in mind that you want to uniquely solve. You can start a non-profit organization. There's so many non-profits which are operating in India. All non-profits are also a startup. It starts with an idea in someone's head. 
It starts with a problem you deeply care about and you're willing to commit your time and resources for that. You can start a podcast. On the surface, it looks like it's very easy to start a podcast, but trust me, <laughs> once you get into it, you know, you realize that a lot of different skills you need to develop, but it's a great learning tool, you know, that I'm enjoying the process. You know, it's uh, just showing up every day and practicing and recording in front of camera. It's its own challenge. Uh, you can start an idea. You know, what I mean by idea is you start a Facebook group about a topic you really care about and let the like-minded people hang out there, have a conversation about that. Recently, I, I came across this community under 25. I'm not sure exactly who started this, but it has stuck a chord among the under 25 people because they feel they finally have a forum where they can talk about the issues that matters to them in the language that they are able to relate to where they are no adults supervising or approving, you know, what's a uh, right thing to say or discuss. You can start a cycling club. You know, I know somebody who recently started a cycling club in HSR Layout and the club has now grown to over 100 people. Uh, these folks get together every Sunday morning, 7 a.m. and go for 50 kilometer, 100 kilometer bike rides. I remember a long time ago in uh, Bay Area, I started a cricket team. I came across this tennis cricket league and I wanted to play, but uh, I couldn't find a team I could join. So I started my own team and it took me three months to find uh, 12 players who were willing to show up every weekend to play. But then the team was born and we ended up playing it for uh, three years. And I think there are a lot of starting up lessons are hidden in that. There was an idea to start a cricket team. You had to recruit people. So you have to sell the idea. You have to organize. You have to assign roles to different players. You have to create a mission that we want to reach to quarterfinal year one or semifinal year two. And so, so I think every type of startup teaches you something about the startup journey. And these ju these learnings are highly malleable and transferable to pretty much any kind of startups you will do in future. So why don't a lot of people start up? There are lots of challenges starting up. The first and foremost is inertia. It's so much easier for me to have today be like yesterday because then I don't have to think about it. I don't need to step out of my comfort zone. I just let my habits automatically drive what happens every single day. I feel good in my comfort zone. But as the saying goes, you know, nothing ever really grows in comfort zone. You need to apply control stress and stepping out of comfort zone is that thing. So somehow you need to break inertia. It's very, very hard. You know, one of my all-time favorite authors is Stephen Pressfield. He has this phenomenal book, War of Art. And yes, War of Art, not Art of War. Art of War is a great book by Sun Tzu for strategy. If at some point we're going to discuss strategy, we can talk about that. But today I'm talking about War of Art. Basically what Pressfield is trying to say that people who want to create something, create something original, they need to wage a war. So who do you wage a war with? You wage the war with yourself because we have this, you know, he has created an artificial persona called resistance. And he claims that we have resistance inside all of us. Resistance wants to hold us back. It does not want us to step out of comfort zone and try to build something new. It would rather keep us in the comfort zone, uh, in the sheltered space where we are not exposing ourselves, where we are not staring at the blank page trying to create something. And he talks about, you know, what all you can do to break this resistance. So learning how do you break the natural inertia of not doing anything new is very, very important to start up. And by practicing with small things is a good way to start. You know, what is one initiative you can do take today? You know, if you are able to do that today, then you know that you have it in you to Take that first step. If you are able to overcome the resistance through whatever method it's required, that will be start of journey to start something big eventually. Another challenge in starting up is just lack of confidence. Most of us have a lot of self-doubt, you know. Can I really start something? So how do you overcome that? I think it can only be done by practice by taking small steps about something that you are uncomfortable about. When I say that I'm way out of my comfort zone as I'm recording this podcast, I'm not lying at all. It's very, very difficult. I am not used to 
sitting in front of camera and looking into camera and just talking but taking the step is a feedback back to myself that lack of confidence about speaking in front of camera is not going to stop me i do believe i have something unique to contribute to inspire the journey of exponential impact and hence i'm willing to step out of my comfort zone and show up every day and try to record this podcast to start something new you are putting yourself out there is going to be highly uncomfortable you may not get the support of people around you you may get misunderstood people may doubt your motives people may think you are way out of your league starting up taking initiative is always hard mahatma gandhi realized that he is supposed to have said that when you start something new first they will ignore you then they will laugh at you then they will fight you and then you will win that's the journey of startup it goes through lo- long period of being highly uncomfortable but continuously learning in the process until you start to see signs of winning and then you start to feel super confident we talked about preparation super important the journey of starting up is never going to be easy you need to create that long preparation method for yourself if you are already on that path amazing if you are not you can start today it's a matter of just putting that little effort every day day after day about the domain about the skill set about the strength you want to build about any internal fears that you want to overcome the longer you prepare the easier it will get abraham lincoln said that if i have an hour to chop down a tree i will take first 50 minutes to only sharpen my axe that's the power of preparation whatever you want to do you have to create that long runway for you to prepare for that part of creating a runway is also financial runway it's all easy and cool to talk about startups glamorize entrepreneurship but uh, the day you quit your job to start something new you are basically on your own you the paycheck will stop the paycheck with brings lot of security and comfort and assurance you design your whole life around that your emis are dependent on your paycheck and if one fine day paycheck stops and you have to support yourself trying to build a startup without adequate financial runway it's going to be very unnerving so part of preparing for a startup journey is also to create that financial runway when you start up you need to give yourself at least 2 3 years without that nothing will ever add up so which means you need to have 2 3 years of financial security so you can currently work on a job you can save money maybe you can adopt a more frugal lifestyle save a lot more than what you are currently saving if you have other support system from your parents or spouse um that can also enhance your starting up journey but that financial cushion and financial runway is super important without that you are going to run out run out of steam very soon and even if you are on the right path if you abandon the right path it will register as a failure and probably affect or dent your own self esteem so to overcome all these challenges you can consciously work on each of those you can fight the inertia on a daily basis you can find your own method of overcoming the resistance that all of us have you can try to develop your comfort with stepping out of your comfort zone you can invest in your learning in preparing for the areas of interest at some point you just need to commit to whatever you want to start write it down share that with people around you make the declaration and maybe take that first step when you feel you are truly ready you can obviously start something part time you don't need to give up your job if you're pursuing a hobby or you want to take a initiative which is a uh, non profit in nature or something you want to do part time like writing a book then you just need to start you need to carve a window of time in your schedule during the you know morning hours or evening hours or weekend set aside the time state the intent and just start from that point on it's mostly about just showing up and putting in the hours every day as you get past first 10 hours 20 hours 100 hours 500 hours eventually you will see 
सम मोमेंटम स्टार्टिंग बिल्डअप इफ यू रियली वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट ए कंपनी एट सम पॉइंट यू नीड टू क्विट योर जॉब बट यू कैंट क्विट योर जॉब जस्ट लाइक दैट यू नीड टू प्लान फॉर इट वेन आई वॉज स्टार्टिंग मिंट्रा आई टॉक टू माई बॉस इन द कंपनी आज वर्किंग फॉर एंड आई टोल्ड इन दैट आई वॉन्ट अ सिक्स मंथ ट्रांजेक्शन पीरियड वेर आई वॉन्ट टू वर्क हाफ टाइम इन दिस कंपनी न्यू स्केल सो आई वॉज डूइंग टू वीक्स वर्थ ऑफ वर्क फॉर न्यू स्केल एंड अदर टू वीक्स आई वॉज डूइंग इनिशियल एक्सप्लोरेशन रिसर्च वर्क फॉर मिंट्रा इन दो सिक्स मंथ आई वॉज एबल टू फिगर आउट इनिशियल बिजनेस प्लान गेट सम आइडिया ऑफ वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट बट आई ऑल्सो हैड सपोर्ट ऑफ हाफ द इनकम बिकॉज आई स्टिल वर्किंग हाफ टाइम फॉर दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बट इवेंचुअली यू हैव टू कट द कॉर्ड यू हैव टू पुट इन योर पेपर्स यू हैव टू इन्फॉर्म पीपल वेर यू वर्किंग दैट यू आर कोडिंग योर जॉब एर यू आर गो टू स्टार्ट समथिंग न्यू वेन यू स्टार्ट आई थिंक लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम डे वन यू हैव सडनली पुट योर योर सेल्फ वे आउट देयर यू आर वे आउट ऑफ योर कम्फर्ट जोन यू डोंट हैव द सपोर्ट ऑफ अ पे चेक शोइंग अप ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ एवरी मंथ यू हैव फुल डे टू योर सेल्फ you are not stuck with the corporate hierarchy you don't need to do stuff to please your boss now you get to be the author of your own story you can choose to design your day how you want to be if you want to learn something you can do that you want to reach out to a lot of people you can do that and you will notice that your brain starts to work very differently because you have both excitement and anxiety about what to expect and that's the really fun part of starting up and it doesn't get boring i remember when i started second time with curefit and we rented this small house in hsr layout after having seen huge scale at both mintra and flipkart it was quite strange and weird to walk into a small house with just three four of us and basically staring at each other now what you know what do you do because it's very difficult to create momentum in the beginning you have to almost invent some work on a daily basis to get a sense of your moving forward uh you know you reach out to lot of people you read as much as you can about uh, the area you are interested in you you need to create very small milestones about writing down something or writing that you know the first line of code just that idea of uh, just you know making something happen from nothing is hard and that's what you are going to encounter in you know first few weeks first few months of starting up i want to use this idea of dominant niche that peter thiel talks about in his book 0 to 1 idea of dominant niche is can you find a super niche and try to build something where you can be extraordinarily good in that thing uh example of a dominant niche for uh my curl journey was when we started we picked a very small area in south bangalore uh if you are familiar with the bangalore geography just uh, hsr layout koramangala sarjapur area and we said we are going to build initially five and eventually 10 centers to a very strong density in this area and we are going to see if that we can find people who really love our offering in this area so it's a very tiny geography but our intention was to build a product which was highly differentiated and really be dominant in that once you find some kind of dominant niche you can start to diversify from there if you look at look at tesla's journey initially tesla was only bought by all the silicon valley and hollywood celebrities that was the market uber started similar manner it was super premium luxury product that very few people in san francisco was using but they loved the product so what kind of dominant niche can you focus on you know when you start up you are very small you cannot cover a large footprint you cannot go after large market opportunities your vision can be very big but where you start needs to be very small you can also focus on this concept that kevin kelly uh, has evangelized he calls it thousand true fans anybody who starting from scratch what is a journey you can undertake to arrive at first 1000 true fans you can literally sell your product door to door you can sell it to your friends family friends of friends all the whatsapp groups you are part of but are you able to find those first 1000 true fans who really love your product who rave about the product you are building 
it does not require huge amount of marketing money it does not require lot of effort to acquire 1000 customers but if first set of customers don't truly love your product which means the product is still lacking something you have not solved a problem uniquely a startup gets deserves a right to exist when you uniquely solve a problem so paying lot of attention to that in the initial formative years is super important i like this idea of last mover's advantage and what last mover advantage mean is that you don't need to be necessarily the first in your space to start but can you do something better than the other players in the space when mintra pivoted into fashion we are not the first player trying to sell our uh, fashion products online in the country there are many other players but we thought that something we can do very differently in terms of uh, presentation of the catalog in terms of freshness of the inventory in terms of relationship we can will we can build with the brands and so on so by being a last mover you can create a distinct advantage for yourself apple has repeatedly being a last mover in many markets the portable music players were all the rage in early 2000s before apple decided to come with the ipod product but they completely changed the game on everyone similarly smartphones were quite popular before apple got into the business but they again raised the bar dramatically and that's you know last mover advantage so you can think of, you don't have to be first one or a pioneer but you can find some way to move the needle some way to create that wow experience for your users and that becomes your calling card in the early days of trying to build something also remember there are really no rules the beauty of starting up is you get to make your own rules you can think about what matters to you what is your method of working what gives you joy on a daily basis and uh, you start on your startup journey according to yourself you know after all that's why you are choosing to start up instead of working in a large organization where there are set rules set uh, expected behavioral patterns you cannot take too much risk cost about your comfort zone but in your startup you get to make the rules if you want to have a four day work week you can do that i know startups who do that uh if you want to start late in the day you can do that you want to work you want to everybody in the company work in hybrid mode you can do that one of the companies i am part of next sleep did that basically their entire existence they are just a hybrid workplace so people are from work from wherever you know i don't think they even know where all the employees work from but everyone logs in and everything is available collaborating online so you create the rules that makes sense to yourself you know when we are starting cult um i did not like the idea of hierarchy people reporting someone so we said in cult we are not going to have managers you know that's the fun part of doing a startup you know you can live by you can create your own rules and create a very unique environment that is conducive to what you are trying to do it's super important to start for the right reasons when you start something you cannot obsess about the results or outcome or certain milestone you are trying to achieve those are important from planning point of view but the most important thing is to make sure you are going to enjoy the journey startups are difficult every day is going to be difficult but you are getting to do what you want to do you are getting to be your own boss you are getting to learn things at your own pace the super important to really enjoy the journey i think in all startups journey is the biggest reward you learn so much you have so much fun in the process startups obviously come with lot of risk so results are not guaranteed no one can say that this is absolutely going to work but if you can enjoy every single day and that's why it's very important to pick startups in area that you like or domains that you enjoy spending time in for example for me I love everything about health. So for me cure food was never work. I get to talk about fitness, health food, mental health and so on, you know, we design different kind of gyms, we talk about how we can bring about transformation in people's life, what science has to say about health and so on. So it's not work at all. It also doesn't matter whether we are achieving significant milestone on a daily basis or not. Just the joy of working on health itself is truly rewarding. if you are able to find that balance that you are really enjoying yourself every single day then startups become super fun 
I like, you know, what uh, I think Jeff Bezos said, and I think he borrowed this from Warren Buffet. He calls this idea of tap dancing to work. <laughs> Can you work on something where you're so happy in the morning that you're literally tap dancing to work? If you're doing that, I think you will never regret your startup journey. You will have so much fun in the process. You will learn in a really accelerated manner. I have seen startup founders grow so fast in their one or two year of journey. In a typical corporate setup, it may take them five or ten years to learn as much, because you are every day on your toes. You are challenged every day. You have no place to hide. You cannot make up things. You cannot blame anyone else. You have to take full accountability and ownership for whatever good, bad, and ugly happens in a day. Startup really teaches you how to deal with failure because failure are part and parcel of stuff that happens on a regular basis. The moment you start to reach out to people to recruit, a lot of people are going to tell you your idea is not going to work. They will not join you. I remember how difficult it was for us to recruit people in the early days of Mintra. A lot of time, candidates will come all the way up to this small house where our office was. They will see that the office was in a house. and they will go back from there without even coming in for interview a uh, lot of people we talk to you know will tell us that no one buys anything online people will not shop for fashion online and so on uh when you start reaching out to investors mostly what you hear from investors is no i think in my life all the investors i ever pitched to i think 90% of the investors would have said no until recently and even today if i go out and pitch for a new idea i am pretty sure at least four out of five people will say no that's the nature of the game you get used to you know hearing no from people you know prospective employees are saying no prospective partners are saying no venture capitalists are saying no your uh, family and friends themselves might have lot of doubts about what you are doing uh when you put your product out there your know, customers may not like your product in fact some of them may hate your product right because early products tend to be really crappy you know things are not uh, pixel perfect uh, perfection will take long period of time it will take lot of iterations so how you cultivate your relationship with failures is very important in the early days you know every time you have a setback approaching it from the vantage point of what can i learn from this experience uh, what is new that this experience is telling me what can i do different tomorrow day after is where failure start to almost become uh not only enjoyable but also an opportunity to turbocharge your learning uh part of becoming an entrepreneur or starting something is to really have this comfort of failure we say this stories again and again you know i think jk rolling had the history of getting rejected by i don't remember but dozens of publishers they all told her the concept of harry potter will not work she kept getting rejection after rejection at some point she did not even have the money to pay her rent but eventually she found a lucky break someone was willing to take a bet on her manuscript and we all know harry potter is a history making franchise in the both in the world of books and now movies as well so rejection receiving no continuous failure is part and parcel of the journey and hence you know i emphasize early on preparing for the journey is very important you cannot accept um wins every day or approval from lot of people um the starting up journey is going to be very lonely you know it's a uh, first few years you are pretty much on your own you're running out of your savings you may run out of friends as well uh if you are not watchful you may start to have lot of self doubts so having that mental fortitude to deal with this in the right frame of mind and embracing the startup journey in its fullness along with all the setbacks and failures which are inevitably going to happen in fact seeing the positive side of those failures is going to make you a great entrepreneur and in the end it's really not about what you produce but it is about what you learn in the journey i have seen lot of people who would attempt entrepreneurship for 1 2 or 3 years they will learn so many unique skills and perspective and self awareness in the process and then when they go back they will be outstanding in their job you know i love hiring people who have failed in entrepreneurship 
because they come with so much clarity of thought they have very deep self awareness they also know what is real what is not real they don't have these fake concepts anymore in their head and that makes you outstanding performer so there are lot of benefits of starting up a journey success is definitely not a given and uh, because the odds are usually stack against you the probability of starting up something and making it work is so small that no one can really count on it if i were to start a new company today i cannot say the probability of it working out is going to be 100% because you are dealing with a lot of unknowns you don't know what are the problems you will encounter you don't know what other companies in the space are going to do you may not catch the right draw of the luck and so on given all the unknowns that you cannot really manage for what's in your hand is to understand the journey is to enjoy the journey is to learn from the journey you can keep giving yourself better odds of succeeding and then eventually embracing you know both success and failure i think every entrepreneur must take the lesson of geeta to the heart you know it's not about the outcome it's about the process it's about the journey it's about doing what's in your hands everybody knows that starting up is a very lonely journey you are out there by yourself you have lot of self doubts you don't know what is going to work what is not going to work what to expect few weeks few months down the line you'll probably start to run out of your saving money and so on so preparing for that is super important first of all you need to pay attention to your support system you need to really see that who are the people who are close to you that you will be able to talk about your startup experience when you have bad day at office who are you going to be able to have a conversation is there a close friend or a spouse or a mentor that you can talk about all your fears all your challenges the days when you truly feel down when you start to have doubts about that what have you got in yourself into and trust me those days will happen you know all my startup journey i have had numerous such days where i was really wondering what am i doing here i could easily have a nice job get my paycheck and not worry about all these you know mess that our startups come from so having that support system in terms of emotional support is super important a huge part of your support system in starting up are your co-founders i am a huge proponent of starting with a co-founder startups are a very lonely journey and if you start as a single co-founder is going to be even harder there is going to be nobody else around you who will have the same context of what you are going through what you are trying to make it happen what are challenges you deal with on a daily basis having co-founders enables you to split your work with somebody you can share the workload you can take care of some part of business your co-founder can take care of some other part of business you have a continuous sounding board every day you can have multiple interactions in my early mentor journey my co-founders ashutosh vinit and myself used to talk pretty much non stop whole day and that is a big part of uh, us figuring out what we are doing dealing with difficult days you also need to pick your co-founders very carefully you know a lot of people make the mistake of starting with friends but friends are not co-workers you know co-founder is first and foremost a co-worker you are trying to collaboratively work so knowing somebody you can really work with where you can have very healthy give and take it's very clear what you are really good at what other person is really good at you have that mutual trust you are the able to spar without letting things um affect you more deeply all those are very important considerations picking go picking a co-founder but if given a choice i'll strongly advise that take your time wait until you find the right co-founder typically two or three co-founder setup is great more than three co-founders tend to become too much too crowded there are too many cooks in the kitchen and one is too little you know you are out there by yourself feeling really lonely so if you can find uh one or two more co-founders who are willing to work with you that's a outstanding setup i think the most important conversations you will have in your startup journey is going to be with your co-founders uh you will continue to develop same context the days when you are feeling really low your co-founders might be able to pull you up and you will do vice versa for your co-founders so let's look at the journey of startup and you know, how does first few months or even first few year look like when you start up you know you have no resources 
you are just a few people there's not a whole lot you can do with that so it's very important to be very focused and do as few things as you can you are trying to achieve some kind of product market fit and i think in a later podcast we'll talk in lot more detail about how should you go about building that initial product and acquiring product market fit but uh, for now let me just say that the more focused you can be and the less number of things you can be you will be able to make your meager resources last that much longer at some point in the journey you need to really find your feet you know once you start on day one will be quite unnerving you are really way out there you know way out of your comfort zone so figuring out what kind of modus operandi work for you uh how do you like to work what does your initial team look like finding that op- operating cadence where you are able to be effective as a group will take some time so figuring that out in first few months is very important if you can notch some small wins that will boost your confidence like and nothing else you know the confidence can come from doing small pilot studies interviewing some prospective customers in focus group settings showing mock up of what you want to do or uh, doing a write up or a business plan sharing with people around you and seeing for some validation that works for that people are finding useful the people think there's a chance of it working out uh once you are able to launch your product and see people are using your product i would strongly recommend celebrating every small win because that is going to be antidote against all the loneliness and frustration and lack of resources which are part and parcel of all startup journeys you need to also figure out a way how can you give your sustaining power you know you will not do anything world changing 6 month or 1 year or even 2 year so a big part of early stage journey is how can you prolong your runway if you are able to find some kind of uh, angel of funding you know it could be from friends and family or from various angel networks so that you have some money to last for 2 3 years if you are able to get your initial seed round done by professional vc even better all this will create their runway for you uh anything you can do you know any partnership working with a large firm uh doing a barter deal with somebody anything you can do to keep prolonging your runway and one of the things i have used in the startups i've been part of is uh, how can you figure out a way to never die you know the startups they don't die eventually figure out a way to make something work so it's a boils down to a lot of choices being smart about certain decisions uh being very frugal getting the max out of all the resources you have being super resourceful to keep extending your runway and keep giving you staying power if you can do something to generate some revenue for the organization even while you're working for your core product that can give you some staying power in early days of mintra we had a side business where we were doing services business for some other company we continued doing that to pay for cost until we were able to raise first institutional round and then we stopped that thing by creating that runway for you you give compounding a chance you know we'll keep talking about compounding in this podcast series again and again but compounding cannot happen over one year or two year period you need to be in the game for a long period of time every time you are able to extend your runway by 6 month 1 year you are giving compounding that much chance your it's not only compounding of results but compounding of learning as well uh, you learn a lesson today tomorrow you are equipped with that lesson and something else happens you are going to build upon that knowledge so your knowledge and skill set is also compounding in the process startup journeys are going to be unlike anything else you ever do there's so much uncertainty you don't know from day to day what's going to happen serendipity is a huge part of a startup journey lot of unexpected things happen from day to day and just learning to go with the flow while you are open to all the possibilities you take all results in your stride if things work out great you celebrate that if it things don't work out well you accept it you look that as an opportunity to learn something new to reinvent your playbook try something different come back re-energized uh, but knowing that you are getting better every single day is the biggest reward of a startup journey i think those of us who are able to take their initial first step and start up something are truly fortunate uh 
is going to be one of the most accelerated learning journey of your life i truly believe that outcome doesn't matter it's impossible to say that you will absolutely make something work you know it may work it may not work that's how a startup game is set up the odds are highly skewed against you there are too many unknowns uh chances of success are not only depend on your effort but also larger macroeconomic factors you know the state of economy state of venture capital you know we are seeing it right now as we speak the 2021 was great time there was so much venture money was coming in but uh, this year is not going to be even one fourth as much as was 21 so a lot of startups are now struggling to raise money it's not their fault it's uh, they are still doing what they were doing so there are all these factors that are you know beyond your control but what's in control is what you do every single day how you're trying to solve problems how you're trying to learn that experience is going to shape you in the ways you cannot even imagine so if you are able to prepare yourself deliberately for your startup journey start in earnest whenever you are able to and you don't have to start full time you can start many initiative part time and i think that's great way to start great way to test waters you know try to make something happen in your personal life in communities around you or at your current workplace and see the starting up journey from beginning to end it may last few weeks it can last few years and see what you learn about that journey you know what are you finding about yourself what uh, deeper truths about yourself you are learned from that journey how are you able to deal with the ups and downs that are going to be part of the journey and by the time you are ready to start make sure you've really prepared for that if it takes many years to prepare that's absolutely fine uh whenever you're going to start the if by that time you have deep understanding of who you are what your strengths are what you enjoy doing why you are getting into that startup what is the bigger picture of life about yourself that you have created if you are able to immerse yourself in that domain for a long period of time if you are able to create a long term apprenticeship in that area so that you have learned a lot of skills by the time you are starting you know how the game works and you are able to create that extended support system around you you will be fully prepared you will be like a player going to perform who has really rehearsed who has developed all the right skills and feeling really confident starting and once you are starting just completely surrendering yourself to the process is probably the best way to go you will not be able to control what happens on a day to day basis but you can control your reaction to what happens on a day to day basis no matter how long your startup journey last you can rest assured that journey will completely transform you as going to transform you for the better you will realize that you are learning lessons that go well beyond the product or company you are trying to create you are transforming yourself you will be developing much deeper understanding about yourself you will learn how you handle crisis how you handle difficult situation involving other people how what is your relationship in dealing with the risk is and these lessons will stay with you they will make you significantly better person both in your personal life and whatever work you do in future you should also remember that most people who are successful as an entrepreneur don't get it right the first time around many people take 3 4 5 times to start up and the beauty of starting up is you can go back to a job you can prepare and you can come back after 2 or 3 years i know many people who have you know gotten it right in their third fourth fifth attempt um before i started mintra i tried to start a company three different types in silicon valley you know and all those attempts never lasted more than 6 month but i learned something new and different i learned how difficult it is to start something i also learned that i like the process you know the whole idea of being able to create something from scratch really gives me immense amount of joy so i wanted that feeling in my life i took my time during my 8 years in silicon valley i learned a lot about startups i deliberately work with startups you know that was my 8 year long apprenticeship in entrepreneurship you know working for these four different startups uh there's so much i was able to learn about the whole process starting up is going to be one of the biggest adventures of your life 
you don't have to start today you can take your time in preparing well for a startup journey we talked about lot of different things which are relevant for any startup journey there are many avenues to practice these tools to prepare yourself to get ready for your eventual startup journey but whenever you start make sure you are fully prepared for it we covered many different mindsets tools and techniques which are relevant in that journey some we just touched upon which are topics for probably further deep dive at a later stage in this podcast series but hopefully you have lot of things to think about you can start preparing for starting up one day or maybe you can start something today itself that's your choice but thanks for tuning in see you next week